tales of a man, a six so long, sat by the pool, felt alone. Day after day, people passed him by. Oh, the pain that filled his eyes. Then Jesus came his way, asked the man, do you want to be whole? And yet I can hear him say, yes, without a doubt. Please excuse me, I got a shout. Do the same for you. Hold your head up high. Your deliverance is high. And know that it's your time. Oh, it's my time to be blessed. Oh, it's my time to be blessed. I know oh, it's my time to be blessed. It's my time to be blessed. Oh, it's my time to be blessed. Oh, it's my time to be blessed. Oh,
it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to our pastor, Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. Thank God for being in church. Yes. yes. This is not the place that a lot of people like to go, but they should. Yes, because God has been good. He don't really owe you nothing, but you owe him your entire life. I am grateful this morning for the blessings of God, for the privilege it is for being in his house, for just knowing without a doubt we're in the best place. No matter what's going on in the world this morning, if you come to the house of God, it makes a world of difference. I am so grateful for his blessings, for all that he's done, for every person that's here this morning, to every visitor that's in our service. We thank God that you're here. We trust that you will be blessed and ministered to. And if you open your heart, I guarantee you that you will. So we're just thankful that you're here. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. Father, we're so grateful today for your blessings. Thank you for the privilege it is to come to worship you. Thank you because nobody ever loved us like you loved us. Thank you for Calvary, for all that it represents. May men and women, boys and girls be drawn unto you. May you break every yoke and every chain that binds. And I curse every spirit that would come in this place in the name of Jesus to come subject right now in the mighty name of Jesus and work a miracle, God, as only you can. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The 10th verse says, go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, and lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. I want to preach a little bit to you this morning. We find the apostle, I mean, I, I mean the prophet speaking here. And he's saying, get ready, go through the gates. Don't just stand here and think about it. But then after he told them that, then he says, you got to set up a standard. Every time that God does something for his people, without a doubt, he is going to set a standard for you to live by and walk by. But as I look at this, I'm thinking we are living in a, in a time, no doubt, that we don't see very many people or churches that have a standard anymore. We got more standards set for us in the secular world than we have in the church. That's a tragedy. And so over the years, you have watched people continuously not stay on course, not do what they need to do, but somewhere else doing what they want to do. Now you can almost join every church in this country and nobody will tell you you can't do something. That nobody puts the word can't in anymore. It's everybody want to do I can. Check this out. That's only one person that says I can do all things through Christ. We're not talking about that can. We're talking about the ones who don't want to do right and they're seeking out churches and people that's going to let them do what they want to do and don't hold me accountable for nothing. you got to be held accountable for your sins. It is up to the preachers to take a firm stand and say to you, you cannot be a member of this church and do anything. We've had people come here and say, well, I just want to join the choir. Do you know what it means in this church to join the choir? You got to have a life. You got to have a relationship with God. You don't just come off the street and say, I want to be in the choir. Really? Anybody can sing. The devil knows how to sing. But we need some people that says, I'm serving God. I'd like to lift up praise to him. And my life measures up with that. Yes. So we have become so comfortable not having any rule to control us. I had somebody tell me not long ago that I like to go to a big church because you can get lost up in there and the pastor, nobody knows what you're doing. You can't go get lost up in here. 
No. God will show you for who you are. Think about it. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, God, help us as a church, as the people of God who profess that we know him, help us to do what we need to do that we can have churches that you can feel good about and yet have a standard to keep you in check, that you just can't do anything, call yourself saved. You can't do it. And so I, I am glad I was raised up when I was because the stuff I see today, I think God helped. I can't imagine what's going to happen 10 or 15 more years from now. Will there be any church? It's, I mean, everybody's doing their thing. Everybody will call themselves a Christian. You ask them how you're doing, and they say, I'm a Christian. But their lives never change. They never stop lying and cheating and, and doing drugs and drinking booze and, and having affairs and all that. Nothing's changed. But they say, hey, I'm a Christian. Christian and sinners, you know why there's two names? They both have a different meaning. If Christian, if sinner was the same, same thing, then we wouldn't need Christian. You got two words here defining that something about your life should be different because we were all born in sin, but now we can't change that part. But now the fact that we're here, it is time for us to look to God and say, Lord, you know what? I want my life changed. I want to serve you. You don't, you're not going to make it. You know what people tell me? Well, do you have to do all that to be a Christian? Yes, you do. Amen. Well, how much do you have to do? Everything the Word tells you to do. Right. <laughs> but for, as a whole, people don't like rules. Don't lay no rules down. I want to be able to manage. Man is so caught up in his own way. He just wants to do what he wants to do. He doesn't want these restrictions. You know, some of us that were at home and growing up with our parents and what have you, we, at times, we look forward to the day we can get out this house. Because my mama or my daddy or whoever it is in authority is always pulling the, pulling the chain, pulling the chain. And you can't never really get loose and do what you want to do. And then when you get loose, you do stupid things. I look back on my I look back on my life when my grandmother said you can't do this, you can't do that. And I was I thought she's just old fashioned, out of step, ain't got a clue. It didn't take me hardly a week out of that house doing my thing to realize she was telling the truth. At first I just thought she was old and out of step. But I'm telling you something. They are giving you something to say to you, look, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. If we, our whole society somehow is built upon rules, some of them are good, some of them are not good, but they all have rules. And if we don't abide by it, we pay the consequences for it. So the same way with walking with God, he's got rules, but these are good rules. God created man. He knew what it was going to take for you. He knew what would, what would make you happy. He knew what would make you sad. And he done everything in his, in his power to pull you from the sad place. Think about it this morning. So let's look at your life and say, you know, what is it? I don't, if church starts at 7, I don't want to come at 7. I'd rather be at 7.30. 7 o'clock. Okay. Nothing's worse than people who disrespect timing. Timing is important. And people, it's a tragedy that we see people always late to everything because if you're late to everything, you're not going to get to the kingdom for the ten virgins. Five of them didn't make it because they were late. Are you a late person? I, you know, I mean, I'll get there, whatever. No. Listen to this. I think we got to say to ourselves, even when, we, even when we become adults, that I still got to listen to somebody. Just because you're not home with your mom or your dad, a family member, doesn't mean you will ever, ever be in a place where you don't have to listen to somebody. If you get a job and go to work, you got to follow some rules or you're not going to have a job. You'll go in one morning and have a pink slip that says, we'll see you. Because you can never get it quite right. Today, we need to, uh, to bring ourselves into a place of discipline. And say, you know what, I'm going to discipline myself not to do this or not to do that. Put some rules in place for yourself. And not bad rules, not rules that just let you do whatever you want to do. Not that, but rules that restrain you. 
Rules that will make you think twice before you do something. You know, it's a lot harder to do something if you know, if, if there's a rule for it and you break it, you have a hard time doing it. You, you, have, have you been on the street and, and uh, riding down the street and you breaking the law by driving past the speed limit? It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable because I hope I don't run into no cop. Because the rule is, you know what the rule is, but you're breaking it. Now you know without a doubt what the speed limit says. Why don't you do it? No. If you, here's, 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 I watch this in this country. They lowered the speed limit some years ago way down. I think it was the 55, if I, if I remember. They re, people drove 65. They drove 70. Okay, they raise it back up to 70. Now he goes 75. Now he goes, and what is wrong with man? I don't want to do the speed limit. I don't want to be controlled. I don't want to have rules that tell me I can't do this. So I live my life breaking rules, breaking rules, and it comes back to eat your life up one day. <laughs> because you don't take it seriously. Take things serious that without a doubt, I got to be careful what I do. If, you know what, once we've been told that something is wrong, <laughs> when we get ready to do something, we get checked on it. We think, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't do that. Even down to your parents when you were kids that say to you, oh, you can't have any cookies before dinner. You have to wait till later and get your cookie. What is it about man that says, just one cookie? I mean, I'm not going to get cookies. But if I just can have one. And then the urge, once you start telling yourself, why is it that I can't have a cookie when I want one? Because it's unhealthy and mothers are trying to train you to be healthy. And somewhere inside of you, I don't care how many times you pass through that kitchen and look at that cookie jar, you keep thinking just one. Man has a driven, a driven force that is driving him. If you tell me no, I got to do it. If it's wrong to do it, I want to do it. If God says no, what is it in me that says I want to do that? What is it about you? And I'll tell you, it's called sin. Sin drives you to continuously want to break the laws of God and not abide by them. So you look for churches that preachers will say, it's okay, God understands. We're all human. I'm just like you. You shouldn't be in any church where a preacher is just like you. No. You know what the preacher should be? He is the standard bearer. He's supposed to hold up the standard. And you're supposed to follow him. If the preacher don't do it, you shouldn't do it. That's why the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me. And then when they become the people who drop the standard, people start doing it too. Listen to what it says. It says, um, when a standard bearer falls, Everybody that's following him began to waste away. When a standard bearer falls, the people that follow him or her loses strength. When a standard bearer uh, falls, the people begin to flee in terror. What are we going to do? Because now the foundation of what we are and who we are is no longer in place. And the scripture says, if the foundations be moved, right. where is, what shall the righteous do? If we move the foundation of holiness and righteous living and moral living, then there's going to be a lot of people falling by the wayside that can't make it. Because they're in a position where I had my eyes on this preacher, my pastor, and he was the standard bearer for a while. But then he dropped it and he began to do everything that everybody else was doing. Somebody's got to lead with strength. Somebody's got to lead with power. Yes. You can't just keep doing things and say, well, the Lord understands. You're going to go to hell if you don't stop. 
You can't get around that no matter how you try. I will never give anybody the place they can say, well, Sister Rose did it. You're not going to have that. Because I refuse to be a leader that don't hold up the standard bearer and say, this is what we should be. This is how we should walk. This is how we should love God. This is how we commit ourselves to him. And that's important. Yes. If I could just get to a church where people leave you alone. They just don't, uh, it's just not right. Breathing down my neck. Telling me this stuff. Can't go to church and I can't even go home and drink my beer after Sister Rose this church. I'm feeling like a sinner. You are one. You are one. Because a Christian does not drink beer. So if you're in a struggle, I got to light up after church. And and Sister Rose make me feel guilty about pulling out my cigarette. If you're a Christian, you shouldn't have one. But now they say you're a Christian. That's all right. Do whatever you want to do. It's okay. That's not okay. And somewhere throughout America, preachers need to stand up and say, that's not good. That's That's not right. We tend to kind of whitewash it over, smooth it over, and let it go when God is holding us accountable to be the standard bearer. You walk with the standard, and you hold it high. A a, a preacher wrote a book one time and said, uh, we need to to lift up the, uh, we need to raise the standard. You can't raise what don't exist. There is not even a standard to to raise. We do, we, we will respect and we'll do it, not because we respect it, to find rules in the secular world, whether they be in grocery stores, whether they be in restaurants, or whatever. They got rules that say don't do this and don't do that. They say, well, okay. Now, if you step over it, somebody's going to stop you. And say, sir or ma'am, uh, the rule is you can't do it this way. Well, what's wrong with doing it this way? It works for me. Whether it works for you, whether you think it works for you or not, the bottom, I mean, the bottom line is you ain't supposed to do it. See, everything that man is doing that God has said don't do is literally destroying his life. Every day, little bit by little bit, you're destroying your life. And you keep taking the wrong path and keep taking it after a while. Whatever God was trying to save you from, at this point now it overtakes you. If you really want to be happy, if you really want to be full, if you really want to be blessed, let's quit breaking the rules. People get married. They go to the altar. They say, I do. I'll be with you till death do us part. I love you only. Started out that way. But the vows didn't mean very much. The rules and the things that you said at the altar didn't count for very much. So now what do I do? I start having an affair. When people get married, affair days should be over. There should be no more affairs. There should be no more issues that you're dealing with. And you've got to get God in your life to be able to do it. You can't do it otherwise. Get God in your life so that you can do it and do it well. It is the greatest feeling in the world is to know today you did it right. We sing the song sometimes, uh, all day long I've been with Jesus. It has been a wonderful day. I have climbed up one step higher in that good old gospel way. No matter what comes, I feel good today. I've been with Jesus all day long. Who you been with? Look at your life. Who you spent your time with? So I, I look at this and say, wait a minute. You're not going to have a great life if Jesus has no place in your life. He's the one that makes us happy. He's the one that makes us full. Everybody have to get one thing in your head. Whatever's right, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care about all this other stuff. If it's wrong, I will not do it. And we quickly learn in our lives as from children on, what is right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad. And the older we get, the more we understand that what's bad, we shouldn't do it. What's good, we should do it. We know that. Have you ever talked to people before and you tell them something that they need to do? Well, you know, I know that, Sister Rose. That's true. I should be doing such and such a thing, you know. And uh, But I don't know. I just, makes me happy to go out and 
get drunk in the club and do all these things. I just feel good. See? Look at your life this morning and say, you know what? I got to start, I'll bring myself to a place that I am not breaking rules. Become disciplined for sure that I'm not going to do it. You know what? Men, before we ever get saved, have some level of willpower. Before we ever get saved. So he'll say, I'm not doing that. And he won't do it. You walk up to any person in this church for the most part, and maybe somebody here said different, but for the most part, and say, could you go with me down the street and rob this bank? You know what they say? The average person, just a normal human being, is going to say, go where? I'm not going to rob no bank. Are you kidding me? And you know what? And don't do it. Just like you can say no to that, you also can say no to other things. This got nothing to do with being saved or being a Christian. Just morally right. I'm not going down there to hold up no bank, man. You go on. Uh, yeah, coward say if you want to call me one, yeah, but I'm not going. We're not insulted by what they say or how they deal with us. I'm not doing it. And stay true to that. Why then can't we stay true to the things that God has said? I, will, I won't even let you do it by yourself. I'll empower you to do it. So you can't say, well, I wanted to do it, but I was just too weak. He said, no, I'll give you power to do it. And even when he says I'll give you power, you still don't want to do it. Yeah, I know, yeah, you know, I need to get it together. I know, I know I'm messed up. That's what my brother told me who died and went to hell. How sad, what a tragedy. Horrible tragedy. I remember very well, he said to me, I'm going to get my life right, Rose. I'm going to get it right, and I'm going back to church, and I'm going to take my son Donnie with me. And I left the last words with him, don't put it off. Be sure you do it. 40-something years old, he died suddenly. Had just finished off a fifth of whiskey, went to bed, and died and went to hell. Quit letting people tell you everybody that's dying is going to heaven. That's not true. There is a certain rule set for heaven. There is a certain road that we get on that leads us to heaven. And there's also a road we get on that leads us to hell. Now you got to ask yourself, what road are you on? Are you on the right road or the wrong road? Because you can talk all day long about you are going, I'm going up to Denver and steadily going south. You're not going to Denver. You can say, well, I'm, that's where my plan is. Well, I tell you, if you don't turn around and start going north, you are not going to see Denver. And that's why people live their life. Well, you know, I'm going to heaven. My daddy died. He's a good man. He drinks sometimes. He curses people out, but he's a good man. He went to hell. You got to deal with what you got on the table. Quit making you, quit thinking that God's going to say it's okay for you to do something wrong. No, I put a law in place. <laughs> when God called Moses up to Mount Sinai, he said, here's, here's some rules here. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. He added to that with some more things. But all of this, tell them that. He said, now, before I told them the truth, before I came, they didn't have, they had a cloak for their sin. But now that you know, you can't get away with it. It's going to bother you day and night, day and night, every day because you heard this. I know I shouldn't do it. When you leave this church this morning, you're going to know I shouldn't be breaking the rule. It's going to come back to your mind when you drive down the street and, 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 uh, uh, and the speed limit is 35 and you're doing 50. You know what? I just left church. And, and Sister Rose just told us about this. It's going to bother you. It's going to come back to your mind. You know, she said that. You know, I, I, I left, just left church, man. I'm out here breaking the law. We don't want to abide by the law. We don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It feels rigid. It feels tight. Like, I don't want to be in this. When you walk with God, it does not feel tight unless you're too big. That's a fact. Because you know what? Any woman will tell you this. You can put on a girdle. It's not uncomfortable. 
if you too fat, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. And you're trying to breathe normal. It's too much on the inside. And that's the way it is when you serve God. When you serve God and you get rid of all of you and all of the crap that you're carrying around, when you put on the girdle of the word, you won't feel uncomfortable. It fits just right. I think that maybe that's why some women don't wear a girdle, but they need to find one. I'm thinking get rid of some of this, and then you can slide into a girdle. But you ain't getting get ready to have a, a good time. You know, you go out and eat dinner. You got a girl along. Any woman that's done this knows what, what, what it means. And you're sitting at the table eating, and you're not really full. That girdle has you restrained. Because <laughs> it's so tight, you can't get it all in there, though you're trying. Take the girl off. And I've had her tell me on my way home, uh, you know, I know I'm still hungry. That's this girl stopped me. We need to put on a spiritual girdle Amen. that won't let you go past a certain point. You know what God has put in the body? He has put in the body a signal in the brain that says to you, you're full. You have enough. How many people just step over that? I've heard this from some of our people. I'm full, but it's going down. Why are you going to force it? And then you get to the place you do it so much, the brain don't even send a signal anymore that you're full. Just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating. And you said to yourself, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hey, I can't hardly breathe. <laughs> if you had stopped when the brain sent the signal, you are full. Wait a few minutes. But you know what? For the most part, it's almost like the commercial is always room for jello, always room for bad stuff. You say, you full, you got enough. Yeah, but I'll take a piece of that cake. <laughs> well, how are you going to get it in if you're full? Yeah, I know, but I'm going to have a piece of that cake. Go on, go for a walk or something, come back later, maybe have a piece. You got to look at yourself and say, you know what? When you cease to be able to function the way you should function, Quit making excuses for it. What did you not do that was right? What did you leave undone that you should have done? What's going on with you? You got all these issues. And they're there because of you. All because of you. I told my daughter this week, I said, Juana, we got this new tape. And it ain't really, really don't look like a professional tape. Looked like somebody just made this little tape. And it's called chair boxing. Well, the average man that works out would say, man, I ain't going with that. That thing is no, play, is no joke. So it lasts for 45 minutes. I said, Juana, so I got all the girls to go out with me one day. I said, y'all come go out with me and let's do this tape together. So we all went out there. At the time we warmed up, Juana didn't know it was a woman. She thought the tape was full, full blown. So... And I looked back, and, and the man said, well, you're all warmed up now. And one said, that's the warm-up? <laughs> yeah. That's the warm-up. I said, Wana, I'll tell you something. If you do this, in a little no time, all the parts that you worry about will no longer be a problem. So we kept on doing this tape, and I was surprised she stayed with it because I like to sit behind her where I can laugh. And I was up in front of her. But she really, she stayed with it. It's a workout. And I know I've done all kinds, so I know it's a workout. So, so when it was over, Juana said, I'm going to stay with it, Mama. I'm going to stay with it. In two days, two days, it was shocking. She came out, I looked at her, I thought, oh, no, I'm seeing things. That ain't, that ain't, that she ain't nothing come off that quick. She, she ain't, I said, I can't I said, Juana, it's just been two days. Look at this. So then she come over. Water would never work out with me on, under no circumstances. And I was up in the room the other morning, and I was doing, doing the same workout. And I said, why didn't you call me? Because I'm staying with this. I said, you should. It's shocking. It is shocking. It's a, it's a take away the excuse for this joker that's saying, I can't stand up. Set your tail down and do it. <laughs> yes. You still can make it work. You know, really, there's, there's some kind of way that you don't really have an excuse, but you're looking for one. Here's something. Stand up now. Sit your rear end down for a minute and do the 
mistake. Ah, my arms get tired. That's because you have thighs instead of arms. <laughs> you guys say, wait a minute. What do I do here? I called Ethel and I was just telling her about it. I'm so excited about it. It's an excellent workout. Boy, do it work you hard. And you would never believe that with chair boxing, but it's unbelievable. So uh, I want to get P. You know, told me, don't get him. I'm going to leave you there. <laughs> he, said, he said, Mama, don't. don't. I said, okay, I'll leave it. But I told Elf, I said, Elf, I got this. Have, have you tried it? <laughs> Do you know that is everybody's thing tomorrow? Tomorrow is going to happen. You said what? I had to recover from Oh, okay, okay. So all right, all right. I just want to see, I want to hear what you say. So I was so enthused about it, I called Ethel. I said, Ethel, my God, this tape is unbelievable. I can't believe it. He's got a wrinkled curtain hanging behind him. He's got a few boxing, a couple boxing gloves over here and a few weights. And he's not using the weights. He's just going with it. And I, thought, I told Ethel, I said, wow, this is unbelievable. So when my kids went with me, they... They said, we're going to do this. The P said, boy, I need that too. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I want to tell on you so bad I can taste it. But I, I'm, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. And so... <laughs> Listen to this. Therefore shall the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his, his, his thorns and his briars in the day, and shall consume of the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted. All the judgment I'm going to bring on you because of you, it's going to be just like a standard bearer that faints. I can't make it. I can't do it. I'm like you. He goes out, the preacher goes out and have an affair. Therefore, he can't stand up, hold the standard up that you shouldn't do it because he's done it. No preacher really has the power or the influence to help other people unless they live according to the rule book. Because if you don't live according to the rule book, for sure, you're not going to be able to do this. So the preachers now are just taking down the standard. There ain't no standard in this church. Do whatever you want. If you go with a sister or brother in the church, have an affair, nothing said or done about it. It used to be in the day that I lived, people would be scared to come in the, in the church if you had done that. Now they come in, look at the preacher, and wink their eye while he's preaching. It's a tragedy. Where is the standard? Where is the rule that you don't do this? It's unacceptable. God will never let you get away with it. Some point you got to stop yourself. When you come and hear the word of God being put out there to you, you got to stop yourself and say, you know what? This is not right. You can stop it as you, when the devil done tempted you to sin right in the midst of it. This is not right. What am I going to do? I'm going to leave it alone. A highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. And the unclean shall not pass over it. It says, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. It shall be a highway. It is a structure. It puts you into a place of structure, of discipline. No unclean thing is coming over this highway. This is the highway that takes you to heaven. The other highway takes you to hell. This one declares you cannot do that and come here. You got to know that. If you're smoking, if you're lying, if you're cheating, if you're stealing, if you're around having sex outside of marriage, whatever the sin may be, rest assured you're not on this highway. On this highway, nobody comes over that's unclean. 
you got to clean up. You got to change your life. You got to understand, I can't keep going down this road. It's not a good road. Who, who feels good being a hypocrite? I go to church on Sunday and say, amazing grace. Woo! And just got out the bed with your woman. Not your wife. Your woman. And you come up in the house of God and sing Amazing Grace like it's something big to sing. You don't even know what Amazing Grace is. You don't know what it is. Quit playing church. Either you're a Christian or you're not one. Either you're going to walk it right or you're not going to. Once you get to the church and you give your heart to the Lord, the preacher should keep you informed of the rule book. This is the rule book. You should have one at home. Not just at church. You should have one. So everything you should do is in here. Everything you shouldn't do is in here. You can't get around it. But people don't like that. I don't want to be in something where I can't do this and I can't do that. Do you want to go to heaven or hell? That's what you got to answer. Rules. God's got rules for man all the way down to you leave this world. You better find it. You better stay on the path. You better do it right. Or at the end of the day, you won't be saved. So I want, to be, I, want, I want to go to heaven when I die. You better change the way you're living. Because you can't go. Think for a minute. Where am I in my life? And why, why don't I like rules? You can make rules for yourself and, and break your own rule. And won't do it. If you could get man to accept, accept what God has given you. And say, he knows what's best for me. Therefore, I'm going to do this because if I follow his rule, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be fulfilled. I'm going to be going places with my life. I'm going to see things that otherwise I never would have saw. Think about it. I'm going to have a good life. Man's life is miserable because he breaks the rule. What do you say? Well, my mama had all these rules at home. I thought when I get out, I'm not going, I'm not going to do all this stuff. I found out that when I got out, everything my grandmother told me was the God sent truth. And I should have followed it, and I did not. I brought some pain into my own life because of it, as you were doing. You're sitting on the pew this morning wondering, I don't know why I'm so unhappy, why I'm depressed, and why I'm down here and down there, because you break rules every day. You can't break rules and be successful. You can't break rules and love God. You can't break rules and be able to stand up to the devil when he comes to try to pull you down and try to defeat you. You have to follow the rules. You try casting out a devil if you want to, and you doing what all and got all his goods, he gonna slap you right in the mouth. What are you doing? Just like when the when the, when the, when, the, when the seven sons of Sceva came and said it was gonna cast out the devil, and 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 the devil said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And stripped them naked of all their clothes and went off running. That's what he'll do to you. You ain't got no power. You got power in obeying the rules. When you don't do it, you don't have power. You're thinking about it, but you don't have it. Try to exercise it if you will. It doesn't work. Look at your life. I look at people all the time in the church. That's where they are. And every time you see this, they're breaking rules. When they come up, they followed it. They broke the rule. They come up, they followed it. They broke the rules. You can't, you can't keep a solid base from which to serve God on and do it good unless you become solid. Not if, if, and up, and down, and maybe so, and I'm not sure, and what else is it, and I'm going to do it better tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. That's what you got. It may never come. Why don't I make up in my mind I'm going to do it today? I'm going to do what's right today. It's going to change your life. It's going to put you in a place of power. That I can say no to the devil when he comes to try to beat me down. I can say no to him. You can't say no to the devil because you got his goods. And as long as you got his goods, he's got the power. You don't have it. When you clean your house and get rid of the devil and all the crap that goes along with him, you got power over him. <laughs> I don't have to say, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up again today. Where's your power? 
I don't have it because I don't do the things that causes you to get power. If you want power, what are you going to do? <clears throat> I watch uh, a show on TV sometimes, and it's called The 600-Pound Life. And I watch these people. Uh, I've never seen people that eat like that. It's like, how did you eat three pizzas? Three pizzas. You are 765 pounds. Three pizzas. That stuff is so got so much grease or fat in it. How did you not get sick? And I'm talking, eat it in a moment. And I'm thinking, and they said, well, this is the reason why I eat like this because my mama died when I was five. Well, this is the reason why I do that because this happened. Well, this is the way it happened because this is the way it happened. Stop for a minute. And I think, but at some point in your life, whatever you're doing and greedily going after it becomes a problem. You got to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Somebody comes along to try to influence you. I'm not doing it. You're asking me to break the rules. No. It's just saying, well, I just went along with him. He was my friend. He's always been a friend of mine. So I just went along with it. Get a crap. Say, I am in the mess I'm in, Sister Rose, because of me. I don't, I'm not disciplined in any way. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. You're not going to have a free life. You're not going to have complete victory. Why? Because I'm a rule breaker. That's what I do. And I do it well. If I make one for myself, I break it. If there's something in the word of God, I break it. No, if I go to my job, I break it. You just become the person that breaks rules. And then here's the, here's the thing that happens a lot of times to people is that when you first start doing it wrong, it doesn't feel bad. Keep doing it. That's why we keep doing it sometimes. Well, I, I don't feel bad. I did that, but it don't really bother me. Wake up, Norman. It don't really bother me. Yes. You got to think for a minute. Wait a minute. Should I do this? Whose life is it going to affect? What kind of reproach do I bring to wherever I'm at? Do I consider all these people around me who trust me, who believe in me? What do I do? I'm not going to do it. Because I don't want to cause nobody to fall. I don't want to cause any sister or brother in the Lord to stumble. I want you to look at my life and say, I want to be like you. How do you keep the victory every day? I follow the rules. That's what you got to go. I follow the rules. And if you follow the rules, you can't go wrong. Every time somebody won't conform to something that is right, he has nothing left but wrong thing. A, a, a standard ap applies to any definite rule or principle. Uh, and it's established by authority. Somebody in authority has set the rules. God is in authority over our life. He has set the rules. We have to follow that. If we don't, we're in trouble. Then he goes and says, it is, it is established by authority as a rule for value or quality. You know why the church don't really have any real quality anymore? Because they don't, do the, they don't obey the rules. So the rules are in place, but we see a bunch of lying people going to church, hypocrites doing all this stuff, and say, man, what's going on? Yeah, I went to the church this morning. We're going to break it down tonight. They're not coming back to church tonight. Oh, no, I gave God some time this morning. Like, don't push it. Don't do it. So I think I'll go back to church tonight. Did you get something out of what was said this morning? Then you say, I'm going back and see what else that I can get that might better my life. How many people? Yes. Yes. I'm going back and listen. What have you got to lose? I'm just going to listen to what's being said. Perhaps. I will find the reason why my life is where it is today. Perhaps I can change things around and start doing things different. Perhaps I can wake up tomorrow to a brand new day, a new start. And you can. And the God we serve 
is a reward to those who seek him, who come to him. He said, I'll reward you for it. Don't spend your whole life breaking rules until the day you die, and then there's no way to turn it around or to fix it after that. So I can do that. You got to learn to use the word, I can, I can, I can. Get rid of what you can't do, what you don't think you can. I don't know about that. Well, how do I know it's going to work? Put all that out to pasture and say, you know what? If God helped others, he can help me. If he can help this preacher, he can help you. You don't have to bow down. You can stand tall. You know, I used to preach a lot of things when my husband was alive and was here, and I preached very strong in the word what we need to do and how we need to protect ourselves and keep ourselves in check morally. The Lord brought to my mind, when you were married, they said, well, yeah, you could do that. You're married. You got a husband or whatever. So you can say that. But for 22 years, I have not had a husband. What did I do with my life? It's still on track. It's still morally clean. Yes. It's still together. That don't mean because I didn't have a husband. Okay, I was 49 years old when my husband passed away. And so what am I supposed to do? I'm saying, well, you know what? I don't have a husband anymore. I'm open for anybody. <laughs> don't be so stupid. What's it going to do for you? When you get through laying down the standard and just doing any and everything, you're not going to become a better person. You're going to be worse. you got to decide, I'm going to be a, a clean person. I'm going to be a real woman. I'm going to stay this way until I die. Yeah. I mean, what do you do when things get tough? That's why we serve Jesus. He takes care of the tough issues. He takes care of the tough problem. You wouldn't have him if you let him come in. He's going to make it all right for you. But we don't want that. I mean, I, I had lunch with this woman shortly after Charles died, maybe a month. And her husband died like the same time my husband passed away. And we went to lunch and she said, Rose, what are you going to do? I said, nothing. You don't feel like you need somebody? I said, for, for crying out loud, it's been a week. You need somebody already? A week? No. She said, Rose, I, I admire you, but I've got to have somebody. I need somebody to hold me. <laughs> a week? We're not talking about being a widow for five years. You're talking a week. I looked at her, I said, no, I don't feel that way. Rose, that's good, but I'm going to have to find me a man. I got to. I thought, well, did you care about the one you just buried? Did he matter at all? What did y'all have? Did you have any kind of relationship? No, oh, I got to do this. And was shedding tears over it. I don't think she was shedding tears because he was dead. She shedding tears because I need a man. And I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. And they put the lie out on me in the city that uh, Sister Rose is engaged. My husband had been dead three months. Uh, Sister Rose is engaged. I thought, engaged to who? Oh, that woman ain't going to stay by herself. Oh, yes, she is. Oh, yes, she is. Because the grace of God is sufficient. You can stay if you want to stay. You can do it right if you want to do it right. You can make it work. You can be an example to other people. So now that I've become a widow for 22 years, they say, so what did you do, Sister Rose? Stay saved. Continue to serve God. Continue to love him and to live for him. That's what I did. Think about it. So, man, she's a good one, ain't she? I mean, I'm looking at this picture, and I'm thinking, man, there ain't no way. We got people get saved, they ain't married, and they're waiting for the Lord to give them a wife or a husband. You just don't go out shopping. When you get saved, you don't try on the shoe. No. Well, how are you going to know? Because God knows you. 
He knows how you feel. He knows what you like and what you don't like. And nobody can fix it for you better than him. Wait on it. One brother in our church some years ago had been waiting for a wife for seven years. He was, he was a young man in his 20s. And um, he said, Mama, I got on the floor. I told the Lord, I'm going to sleep on the floor till you give me a wife. I said, God, I don't care if you sleep on the floor. <laughs> do, I mean, do you think your temper tantrum is going to make him get up and say, Hey, Griffin, come on. No. He stayed for a while. Got married. Didn't do well. We got to quit believing that marriage is the answer to every problem and believe that Jesus is the answer to every problem. He's the answer. That's what makes the difference. So you're sitting there this morning saying, you know what? Uh, I would get saved, but I just don't know if I can make it or not. Oh, come on. Set some, set some rules for yourself. You got people setting rules for themselves and they ain't even saved, and they're saying, no, I, I decided to be celibate. There was a man on the show what show was that? I think one of the talk shows, and he was 30-something years old, and he was still uh, a virgin. And so uh, two, two black men were sitting in the audience uh, uh, on the show, uh, uh, and, and they said, like, are you kidding me? And he said, he said, look at them two men up there. Like, me, never been kissed at 35. Everybody in the audience is like, like something is badly wrong with him. No, he said something for himself. I'm going to save myself until I get married. Now, brother, in the process, there ain't nothing wrong with going on having a little bit here and there. I mean, you, can, you still can be, be some good when you get married. You got to say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. This is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm staying with it. I don't care who laughs at me. Whatever. So they so brought a, a couple of women on the uh, on show for him to have a date with, and he went out on a date. I mean, you on that date, you, if you had any doubt that he was a virgin, you it, it fixed it. <laughs> I mean, this brother, <laughs> it was downright funny. I mean, he didn't know anything about anything, how to kiss, nothing. But he said, I'm not going to do it. Why is it that we don't have more people who say, I'm going to serve God and wait till he gives me somebody that's good for me, and until then, I'll fast and pray, and I'll go on. Until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Until the day God calls me away, I'm going to continue. Set some rules for yourself, and don't break them. You can do that. You say, well, I've never kept anything to myself. Try it. <laughs> Try it. But if you go to God and say, Lord, look, I'm not good at this. Will you help me? He will help you. He will strengthen you. Nothing is like being an example, like being a light. I'm looking at some of these preachers going to, going to bed with their members and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, you got a wife. For God's sake, sitting right there, what's wrong with her? Man, I always want something else in spite of. If I got somebody, if I love that person, if this is who I'm spending my life with, why then am I out here looking for somebody else? I can't get that. I can't put my, wrap my mind around it. I remember when my husband went to, went to Korea, and the lady down the street from us, her husband was in Korea as well, and... That woman had so many uh, dates with me. It was phenomenal. I mean, they were coming and going back and forth. I was like, God, what is she doing? The man comes back with her. A man comes back with her. Her husband comes back with diamonds, rubies, all kind of beautiful gifts. I didn't have no wedding ring at the time because we couldn't afford it. And so I said, Charles, just bring me a ring back. <laughs> did I get a ring? No, I did not. He brought me some, was he in Vietnam? Vietnam. He brings me a pair of pajamas back that only a Vietnamese thigh would go in there. <laughs> 
I'm saying, are you kidding me? I got so mad. He said, Rosa, I, I got this nice silk, beautiful pattern and everything. Else. That, I'm not going to wear that. I hold it up. It's about this wide. You think I'm going to get in this? Not on your life. But the woman down there was doing all this stuff and, and playing on her husband and everything. She gets diamonds and rubies, and I'm true to my husband. I'm staying home at night raising our kids and happy. I said, Charles, that man down there, you know what he brought his wife? He said, Rose, I am that I am. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, I won't be able to wear these. You might find somebody else that'll fit them. I won't fit these. Are you kidding me? So when I look at that, I'm thinking, but if that woman down the street wanted to stay clear of that, she could have. But she chose to go the other way. What are you doing this morning that you are choosing to do that? You're choosing to mess up your own life. You're choosing to be in a mess. You're choosing to take wrong paths. That's what you do every day. That's what I do. I always do it wrong. And have come to the point of accepting it. This is what it is. Think about it. This morning, if you really want to change your life, you're first going to have to consider, I'm going to have to listen and abide by the rules. Because if I don't, my life's not going to be any different. It's not going to be better. Think about it. What are you going to do? So you know what, Sister Rose? I'm coming up and ask God for strength to do this. That's what we all have to ask for, strength. God, I need strength to do this. He'll help you. There's people all over this room that God has helped. Why wouldn't he help you? It's not the end of the road. Come on. Give it a chance. Just try it. If you give God a chance in your life, I'm here to tell you, your life will be the happiest that you have ever had. You want, you'll never find happiness like this. I've been serving God now for 50 years, and you know what? I wouldn't trade this life for nothing. I came to the Lord when I was in my 20s, and I'm loving every minute of my life. I'm not, I'm not helpless. I'm not powerless. What I say I'm not going to do, I don't have to do it. Nothing makes me have to do it because I don't want to do it. I'm empowered. You can be empowered this morning. You're sitting there saying, you know what, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep my virginity and it just seems like I'm about to give in to Jim. Put Jim on the road. Jim will see you. You're about to ask of me what I am trying to hold on to. Now, quit letting people stay in your life and influence you in a negative way. Get somebody that's going to do it right.